welcome to practical 4.1 resistors inductors in series or we shorthand that to R and L R for resistance L for inductors in series so let's get into our prac Dr Ken here with you once again so don't forget to do your risk assessment uh, identify the hazards are you going to need uh, close supervision the risk class high low medium and then what kind of control measures you're going to put in place to try and mitigate that risk. So here's our basic circuit and uh, let me turn my screen pointer on. We've got about uh, 27 volts from our AC power supply. The ammeter is going to be my clip-on AC ammeter. Going to use my digital volume multimeter is a voltmeter. We've got an inductor at about 1345 millihenries and we've got a lamp at cold resistance being about 14 ohms. We've got an oscilloscope, sometimes we abbreviate to crow even though there's no, uh, no CO, no cathode ray in it anymore but our scope and it's just a flash voltmeter and in this case we're measuring the volts on channel 1 which effectively is the supply so this channel 1 is measuring volts supply and channel 2 is measuring the volts across the inductor So let's have a look at how this all works. So this is how it's all connected up. So the actual circuit uh, set up. We can see our 24 volt supply here. And we've simply got a red wire that loops up through our clip-on ammeter and then back down to our inductor. You can see a blue wire here. Just loops in behind the uh, clip-on ammeter and comes out here connecting to our lamp there's our lamp we should call that R1 and inductor over here L1 coming out of the inductor and if you follow the white wire it just loops straight back to the supply at the moment I've got the digital voltmeter simply measuring across the supply we're going to move that from the supply to the inductor to the resistor and our scope our oscilloscope is going to measure our voltage and current sorry voltage and two voltages i should say voltage across the inductor voltage across the supply so just a reminder if uh, you need to use the scope to measure the phase angle you need to determine the time base for the scope is it measuring in two milli seconds per division or five or ten whatever it happens to be uh, measure the difference on the horizontal between both waves in divisions um, the, this is best done at the zero crossing points and then multiply the divisions difference by the time base this gives you the time difference then measure the period of uh, the, one of the waves normally the voltage wave again at the zero crossing points this gives you the period and again, uh, take the number of um, divisions, multiply it by the time base. Now divide the difference by the period. In other words, the difference in time divided by the period, which is a time, giving us a proportion of the total period. So finally, we multiply all of that by 360, and this gives us the number of degrees difference represented by the time difference. So the whole formula, so the angle difference, is simply the time difference divided by the period multiplied by 360 degrees so here's our readings I'll just click my pen into uh, into pen mode and uh, you can see we're pulling about 11 milliamps nearly 12 on the display I've got this wire looped around three times so we're going to take about a third of it so our current's at about 4 milliamps, our voltage supply 27.4 simply comes straight from here up on the 
digital multimeter, which is across the supply, so that's where that uh, reading comes from. Then we needed to know the voltage across the inductor itself. So I've simply moved the leads of the multimeter across here onto the inductor, and we've got 27.1. So that's where this value comes from, 27.1. And then finally, voltage across the resistor itself at about 2.23. And that's where that comes from. Nice and simple. And it was from across the resistor. The 72 degrees, um, all I did was go across here and I had two divisions. My period from here to here was 10 divisions. So two divisions divided by 10, and I simply multiplied that by 360. So I worked out that I had 72 degrees between the two voltages. So that's where that 72 degree angle has come from in our table there. So we're going to use a phasor diagram now to represent that. And here's the start of our phasor diagram. And you can see here I've simply put the current reference in in red, I ref, so that's the reference for the current. And I've put my first voltage on, so the voltage R1 across the, uh, on top of the red because it's in phase 2.3 volts I had across my lamp or R1. The next thing I needed to do was add in my voltage total. So this is the length of my voltage total in the purple at 27.5 at 72 degrees. So if I just turn my screen arrow on, that's that angle in there. So that's our 72 Degrees, remember, of course, if you're doing this prac, you may get slightly different numbers. So this is the basic principle of what's going on. And then the final step was to do this. And we've simply taken top to tailed and connected our voltage inductor back to here. And that should have come out very, very close to our 27.2, which it does. And the angle's a little bit different. So in this particular case, we've actually done a phasor subtraction by putting in all the phases we can possibly can with the angles that we know. And we've uh, then gone back to the beginning. So this is my 85 degrees in here. So I've put the resistance phasor into place, then I put the voltage phasor, and then the difference between the two, which was this one down here, has to be my volts total. So effectively, I've done a phasor subtraction rather than a phasor addition this time. So I've done that by simply putting in the volts total and the volts resistive. And then whatever the difference between the two of them, that's the subtraction, had to be the volts across the inductor. And I got pretty well exactly uh, 27.2. And then I was able to use a protractor and measure off my angle, which in this case was about 85 degrees. So what can we draw from this? Um, once again, circuit has reactants. You can't just add or subtract algebraically. Why? Because AC currents and voltages are complex quantities. They have direction and magnitude, and these can only be added or subtracted using phasor diagrams or complex numbers.